Hello and welcome to the Apex Online Racing IMSA Lights Endurance Series where today we are going to be providing you coverage from round two at Watkins Glen for this fantastic league that kicked off last Thursday at, at uh, Circuit of the Americas. Sorry, I had a very slight memory blank there. My name is Yorkie065 and I shall be your commentator and director for this evening, providing you with the coverage. Welcome to those who are here in the live stream and there in the chat. If I could just get a quick confirmation that mic is sounding all good, that will be very much appreciated. And then obviously once we actually get into the qualifying session, which should be starting in roughly about five minutes time, uh, just another quick check, to just to make sure that all the quality levels in both the video and also audio is all good on that side too. So, like I mentioned, the previous round we raced at Circuit of the Americas in this fantastic IMSA Lights Endurance League, and it was a very entertaining race from start to finish. We had two classes that participated in the race. The first was the LMP3 class, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the race results from last week and essentially the current championship standings in the LMP3 class. Obviously, having only done one round, all the points that have been added up so far are basically in the points positions that the drivers finished in uh, last week. So, obviously, at the top, Aid the Ace came away with both the race win and also the uh, qualifying on pole position as well. So he's up there with 11 points. Now, when you qualify and pole position in this league, you get an extra bonus point as that is the reason why he has 10 points and uh, sorry, 11 points instead of the usual 10. In second place was Bo in the Ginetta. So he's there two trailing by two points. Uh, sorry, three points in, with eight points to his name. Jeremy came in third place, putting in a very good solid result with Smolder in fourth. Flaming Parrot obviously finished in sixth. Martinez, uh, Maxime, finished in sixth place with Andrew Harper, who was having a little bit of some lag issues. He ended up finishing seventh, and uh, Andrew was unfortunately dropping out of this round he was due to be racing but he's dropped out to try and sort out uh, those issues that he was experiencing in the previous round hopefully he can get them sorted and be back ready for round three next up was Bizancic finished in eighth place and then Minisco was in ninth place and tenth uh, was Bernetto finished there with intergalactic gentleman coming home in 11th place and then we also had the other drivers who finished slightly further down the field can't quite make out the name there on the stream give me a second was they ah sorry jay peaches was the driver who finished in 12th and there was a number of other drivers as well who are listed in the league but i'm only showing the top 12 positions here uh just purely because anyone else below, well, from 13th onwards, have zero points. So that is the LMP3 championship standings. Over on the GT4 side of things, we have at the top there, Scott V, who put in a very solid performance. Now, the points for the GT4 class works a little bit different to the GT3s. Instead of scoring 10, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 points, so only the top 8 score points in the LMP3 class, whereas the top 12 score points in the GT4 class, the top finishing position scores you 16 points. But Scott V also qualified on pole, so he gets the one additional bonus point there as well. Andrex came home in second to score 13 points with break check coming home pretty closely in third to take 11 points. Colonel McCoy finished in P4 with nine points. Uh, Marauder was there in fifth, followed up by Pushdom in sixth position and Carlito in seventh. Milo finished up in eighth place with Neela coming home in ninth. TPW, Mr. Ticklish Pickle Wickle, 
came home in 10th place with David Simon there in 11th. And then Mr. BMW M Power I've placed there at the bottom in 12th place. Although he didn't race in the previous race, nor did he race in the previous round, I thought it'd just be nice to put the, the final uh, driver at the bottom of the table there with zero points in a car that is a little bit different to the Aston Martin V8 Vantage, which is a very popular choice in the GT4 class for this season. So that is the GT4 Championship standings. And here we can see the season calendar. Obviously today with round two, we are racing at the Watkins Glen GP circuit and it is going to be a 90 minute race. There's going to be a 15 minute qualifying session that will happen beforehand. But uh, after that, it will be a 90 minute race that the guys will be doing. So I do believe strategy will come into play in this race with the guys having to make a pit stop, uh, potentially four tires as well as fuel. And then next week we are going to be racing at Laguna Seca and we're back to a one hour race. Round four will be following two weeks on with a week's break for Valentine's Day on the 21st of February where we shall be racing at Long Beach for yet again another 90 minute race. Round five will follow a week later at Road America with once again a 60 minute race and then the final race of the season Round six will be on March the 7th around the Daytona International Road Circuit, which will be a 90 minute race, as you can see there on the season calendar. Now, unfortunately, we ran into a whole load of technical issues during the qualifying session and I struggled to actually stay within the qualifying session and provide any decent coverage. However, we did manage to turn things around and get it all sorted for the race and I also had King Kodiak join me in the commentary box as well. So here is the coverage of that race session for round two. Hello and welcome back. Apologies for those technical issues that we were suffering, it seems like. We are launching back into the session now and hopefully we should be good to go this time round. We've got a new lobby host and we also have a new guest in the commentary box as well. I am joined by the one and only King Kodiak. I invaded his private space and he's very courteously not kicked me out again. But yes, hello ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've offered to, as I was actually available this evening, Thursdays are a bit difficult for me. Uh, these days, so I haven't actually uh, committed to doing the season. However, tonight was a bit of a difference, and I saw there was a bit of trouble going on, so I jumped in to see if I could help, and here I am controlling the cameras. Yep, so uh, King Kodiak's going to be taking over the director mode this time, which I'm just going to take the broadcaster mode, which means I get a much clutter-free screen, and it just means that I don't need to worry about doing any of the director work and choosing what drivers to watch instead. I just get to sit here, stare at the screen and commentate <laughs> for you guys. And obviously KK will be pitching in with the commentary as and when as well, like we always love to do here at AOR. Indeed. I, I, I am taking it that they're going to do a manual grid formation. Yeah. Um, so yeah. What a great livery on the, uh, on the LMP3 there. Yeah. That's, the, uh... that's a, Graph the racing, one. Yeah. yep. Graph racing yeah, car, yeah. It's very nice. A lot of the LMP3 cars do have uh, some real-world liveries as well. So the uh, the LMP3 LMP, eh, LMP3 field does certainly look very good, and uh, it's nice to see a, a pretty even split between the Ginettas and the Ligiers. Hmm. Yeah, I noticed that from from looking last week as well. Now, if I recall, the Ginetta is the growler and the the Ligier is the screamer. They both the, growl. Uh, Oh, they both growl. They uh, I'm thinking both, of the LMP2s. Yeah, they That's both have V8 noise. V8 engines, both producing the same amount of horsepower. They're, they're balanced pretty much perfectly. They are very, very good and nicely balanced. It's just more the GT4 field that's uh, kind of heavily favoring the Aston Martin V8 Vantage. Ooh. So there's more V8 goodness there, which um, <laughs> I know you're very, very fond of. I, I've been known to enjoy the uh, mighty roar. That's that's a KTM. Yep, there's a K couple of KTM oh, wow. crossbows <laughs> in this in this uh, in the lobby, Weird. and there's also a Ford Mustang boss as well. 
Oh uh, wow, someone was uh, someone was brave. Then we've unfortunately lost one already. Uh, break check sadly uh, didn't make the start. But we do have 30 cars. We have got 13 GT4s and 17 LMP1s with us. Uh, LMP1s. That's that's not at all right. Uh, LMP3s. LMP3s. That that would be exceedingly one-sided. Yep. Um, so we're we're doing a manual uh, grid form here, of course, because of the lobby issues. Generally, people will be forming into their grid positions fairly quickly. We would hope it's uh, you. You kind of your qualifying only happened so 10, 15 minutes ago. So these guys will have formed pretty quickly into their respective positions. And uh, and there is the boss. Look at that. Yep. Did, it, did Empower poll that for GT4? Unfortunately, I didn't catch the actual quality, quality result. I'm pretty sure he did. When I last saw him, he was there on pole position uh, provisionally. Scott wow. is, uh, is a very rapid driver. He absolutely kind of stomped the field a little bit last week. He was well out in the lead and then he had uh, a slight run in with uh, an LMP3 as it was lapping oh, him no. and he had to pit for damage. But um, he managed to work his way back up through the field from, I believe, somewhere between 6th and 8th position um, to go and take the win uh, Kota as well. So, yeah, he's got a lot of pace. Hopefully we'll see a nice battle at the front of the uh, GT4, GT4 field. We have a bit of a gap. We have a hell of a gap. <laughs> Forming the uh, LMP3s are going to have to slow down a little bit. Otherwise, uh, that, that gap between the uh, between them and the GT4s is going to be fairly big. Looks like the talent of the GT4s has now gotten underway. So most people now should be getting into their respective positions. And there is another one of the KTMs, Marauder. number of names I recognize, but uh, <clears throat> a number of names I don't. So welcome to those that have joined the league. Uh, new to AOR or new to the particular league, always, always welcome to see new names come and join us. Definitely, indeed. There's a couple of familiar names as well. I think the uh, LMP3 cars are probably slowing a little bit more, waiting for the GT4 cars. I think, that was, as you said, there was yeah, a couple that were a little bit slow. Um, but it seems like everybody is now moving, which is good. Hopefully, we should have this race underway in just a couple of minutes' time. Yeah, it's Empower who's kind of hurtling off ahead of everyone else but the, uh, <laughs> the rest bit. yeah the rest of the GT4 cars is just coming up behind him now the M Power did very very well in the Corvette I think it was in the last endurance season yep uh, he joined the season a bit late and absolutely stormed it so again number of uh, drivers I recognize from the GT3 league Scott in particular but also from the endurance side Colonel McCoy commentated on numerous times so glad to see him Andrix of course the fond uh, champion of the endurance leagues in the Aston, then Dacuza in the, it's the M3, uh, isn't it? Yes, it is. I, might, I don't know why my brain went completely dead. I've, I've been a little bit unwell, so uh, anyone that caught yesterday's Rocket League uh, commentary will know how badly I was coughing and spluttering through that, so I'm still <laughs> kind of getting over that. But uh, the show must go on, as they say. There's the LMP field. Looks like they're forming the 2x2 two two line, so uh, we will be getting what remains of the 90-minute race underway very, very shortly. Yeah, I believe it is uh, Bo that is leading the field, qualified on pole position in that Janetta that we see there on the outside. Unless it is Jeremy, I believe that is Jeremy who is in pole position. It is, yes. Um, yeah, unless Jeremy took the pole, so it's anywhere between here and the start finish line and Jeremy has gone at the earliest opportunity and has romped off gaining about a good five six car lengths over Bo as we go in three wide into turn one to calm it down boys we've got an hour and a half of racing a little bit of contact there between eight the ace and Jeremy no Jeremy oh. spun he's spun from the lead that's going to be very very costly for him Hopefully he can get back underway before the GT4 cars. He does, but he drops from first position all the way down into 17th in the LMP3 grid. That was not the start that he would have been hoping for. And I believe the ADS here is going round the outside of Bo into the bus stop. Can they go two by two? It looks like they do, but it looks like the Bo... Oh, oh there's more contact in the background. Car spinning, hitting a... Hitting the wall. I can't get his name in his stomach. Clicky moves. There we go. Yep, yeah, there Mike, he goes. I believe the GT4 cars are coming down into turn one now as well. Here they are. Hopefully the start for these guys is a little bit cleaner. It seems like Empower has retained that lead for the moment with Scott just behind him. As they come up through the hill, up turn two, turn three. There's a BMW there, I believe. No, that wasn't a BMW. 
I think that may have been a KTM crossbow or something. It looked like someone was skirting in the wall in the background. It was of the shot. Maxine Martinez. We've lost one. I think he had a technical problem because it looked like he just went straight into the wall. Ah. Oh, and Fusion's gone as well. So we've actually lost a couple of cars on our opening lap. That's very, very unfortunate. Here we pick that up. Smolder. As the LMP3 cars are starting to come towards the end of their first racing lap. Smolder currently holding fourth with Ruddy Bird just in front of him. Less than half a second. He's got just over a second gap to Inferno behind. But yeah, very unfortunate for Jeremy losing the rear of the car on the exit of turn one when he had such a promising start on the run down to turn one. He gained a good five, six car lengths. Ooh, oh, that's not a healthy looking Janetta. No, what remains of it? That's uh, He's had an argument with something pretty solid. Meanwhile, back in the GT4, Scott staying absolutely nailed to the back of Empower and the Mustang. Then it's uh, Kendall McCoy and Andrex having their battle. Jeremy has uh, brought his car into the pits. I wouldn't be surprised if Logan does the same. Oh, wow, that's every bit of track uh, available to Empower coming through that particular section. Looks like broadly the uh, GT4s are okay, as we have lost a few of them. So we're down to. We've lost another indeed. Down to 11 GT4s. Tickless Pickle, we're going to think, is gone. So, wow, that's three GT4s in the opening lap. That's very unfortunate. We're down to 15 LMP3s as well. We started the race with 17, but as you say, both Logan and also Jeremy in the pits getting damage repairs. Hopefully they can get out relatively soon and hopefully salvage something from this race. Andrex at the moment is getting pretty close to the back of Colonel McCoy as they come up through turn three. Colonel McCoy having a slight slide there at the top of the hill. Andrex has got a little bit of a run and looking to the outside as they come in to approach the bus stop. Yeah, here they come then looking to, well the 2x2 has already been proven that it doesn't work particularly well. And uh, now the guys are probably going to start. So wow, that is so loose. So Colonel McCoy, he's going to have a long day. If that's how he's going to be attacking every single corner. And that seems to be the... I know there's not a massive amount of downforce on the GT4s. But wow, that's uh, that looks lively from the uh, Aston for Colonel McCoy. But back up front to the uh, lead of the LMP3s. Bo has broken away to about one and a half seconds over Aid the Ace. And there he is. Then it is uh, Ruddy Bird and Smolder in a short battle for third position then inferno and marco the pirate uh, all heading on down towards the bus stop area then flaming parrot here's a couple of seconds behind all oh, bit of a lag there for marco the pirate and then aaron's got a uh, little bit of company there in the form of minesco and brzanchek and then uh, we saw matt cooley have that big incident on the opening lap coming into the bus stop but he's still going he's uh 1.1 off the back of brzanchik he looks set to get involved in that particular battle minesco's just lost the position to brzanchik on the outside coming through the outer loop that's uh you either made a mistake or well, that was a great move from brzanchik yeah one of the two uh seems like it may have been a mistake by minnesota it could have actually been potentially a slowdown going through the bus stop chicane because he's uh, dropped yeah. to over a second behind brzanchik and it'll be surprising to lose that amount of time uh, going round the outer loop in that turn five there but uh, yeah with the GT4 cars the cars the Aston Martin is a little bit looser oh we got side by side with oh. Colonel McCoy and Andrex there as they come up over the hill be careful boys it's pretty difficult to go side by side around here but it looks like Andrex has momentarily slotted himself around the outside and up into third position Will he be able to hold it into the bus stop as Colonel McCoy is trying to pick up the slipstream? Looking back to the inside, is Andrex going to give him the room? He is, but Andrex for the moment is going to hold that position and Colonel McCoy is going to have to slot in back behind him again. But yeah, last week it did seem like the Aston Martins were quite loose. The uh, KTM crossbows were very stable and planted. But I think here in the spectator and broadcaster modes, the... Uh, the slides are slightly more exaggerated than what they are actually experiencing. However, when you do catch a little moment like that, which Colonel McCoy did, that is probably a little bit more accurate uh, to what they're kind of experiencing. Yeah, Andrews will be very, very happy with an outside move coming through the outer loop to uh, secure that. I was actually into the inner loop, beg your pardon, to secure that position. But uh, Colonel McCoy is absolutely determined to stay with Andrex. Absolutely fair and square. All gets a bit of a wiggle on. Uh, Jeremy has uh, made his way through the pits and oh, out! That's a very unhappy 
Oh, uh, that's oh, one of the Astons. Oh, Carlito is. Um, oh, oh, Jeremy's white. Uh, well, Jeremy's trying to make his way through the field. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. I mean, it looks a fairly uh, straight overtake. I think he just overcooked it. It's so easy to do into turn eight. But uh, he'd given his uh, tyres a bit of a, a shake there to try and get them back good again. Logan is also trying to recover. So he is coming through that. He's pretty much a lap down on the LMP3 cars as yeah, well. Yeah, I was going to say, that's... Oh, oh, no! That's devastating. Bo has just gone into the... I think that may have been Jeremy. That it was. Jeremy's retired. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's going to be quite substantial da damage for Bo, I imagine. That's gone and handed the lead to Aid the Ace as well. He's being swamped by two Janettas behind him. As Inferno's trying to work his way through the traffic as well. So we're already starting to get the uh, LMP3 field mingling in with the GT4 cars and lapping. Yeah, you can see just how much slower Bo is with that damage with the collision there on the uh, on that start finish line. That's really, really unfortunate for him. Oh, what a strange mistake from Jeremy, because he, I mean, that was quite some way past the pit entrance. So I, I, I guess he's just gotten unsettled coming out of the final turn, turn 11, and it's just ended up sideways along the track. But what oh, a shame for Bo. He was, I was comfortably in the lead, and he had about 1.1, 1.2 seconds over eight the ace. But Aid now has 6.2 seconds over Ruddy Bird, so uh, Aid the ace is fairly comfortable at the moment, but as we've just proven, anything can change it very, very quickly. Inferno coming past. That is, I think it's best Bo, isn't it? That's, That's Logan. Uh, That's Logan. Oh, it's Logan. Yeah. Who's, uh, you know, of course, a lap down on the field. He's uh, trying his best to kind of get through the GT4 field. But, oh my goodness, how quickly that's all shaken up. Here comes Aaron that's uh, going to relieve Bo of another position. Uh, that I would imagine Bo's going to be in the pits for a while with that one. Yeah, I imagine he's got quite substantial uh, damage at the front of the car. Uh, these LMP3 cars do have no assist whatsoever. They don't have traction control or ABS. So, um, oh, there's contact oh. there between the GT4 and one of the other drivers. I believe that was Inferno, who was in fifth position. He's now dropped down into sixth. There we can see Bo in the background diving into the pit lane to try and get the damage repaired. I don't think he's going to be able to make it to the end of the race. It was Carlito who was caught up in that. Possibly just a little bit of miscommunication there between the GT4 and the LMP3 and that lip lapping situation. But yeah, that looks like quite substantial damage to the uh, the front of that GT4. I think he made contact with the wall. As we see, Bo stopping in his pit box, seeming to take on fuel, probably take on tyres and yeah, try and get the damage repaired as well. But yeah, here is, as correctly pointed out in the chat, Scott is leading Empower, so there's been a change for lead in GT4. As indeed, so the uh, mighty Mustang now chasing off after the Aston there. In the background is uh, Andrex, who's got himself a little bit of a gap between himself and Colonel McCoy. Dakuta is in that back battle as well in the M3. That was, uh, who's in the white and in P Smolder. Smolder, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, fairly regularly, as we tend to see in the multi-class racing, the uh, LMPs will come through fairly regularly on our GT cars, such as the nature of the beast. I'm really surprised at how many incidents we've seen already. We're only just hitting kind of, you know, 15 minute mark, and that included the the, uh, the opening formation lap. So, wow, a few people are going to have to, I think, may have a few words to you know, be said to them about how, they, uh, how they're going to go about the... Uh, multi-class racing but these things happen particularly when you have newcomers to a league uh you know there's there's things to learn and mistakes happen to the best of them of course but uh yeah some unusual mistakes going on yeah it does usually take a couple of races just for everyone to kind of see where everyone's at and kind of pick up their tendencies and things everyone tends to be quite cautious on the first race um just to be a bit friendly and kind of try and settle in and then they start to push it a little bit more around uh, round two and round three. Here we're seeing Empower though. He's uh, having a little bit of a look to Scott, so we get onto the multi class chat in the second. Empower's got the legs over the Aston Martin coming down the straight. It was last week the Aston Martin had the legs over everyone else in the straight line. This time it's the Ford Mustang, and Empower has managed to get himself around the ends outside going into the inner loop and bus stop chicane and has gone and retaken the lead in GT4. Beautifully done, very smooth, so close between these two, and no contact, as you are, not, no contact that we've seen at least. 
Oh, it's uh, Scott taking a slightly tighter line coming through. Uh, that's through turn Looking six. Now he's through the toe. Oh, he has. He's gone for that inside line. That's a yeah, that's a banked curve. So there's Aston once again coming up into the lead. You do get the feeling though with the pace of these two, they are going to be doing this for quite some time. Side by side again, coming into turn eight, coming into the hill, absolutely swarmed by LMP cars. And the Aston once again comes back up into the lead. I, I love just seeing how well they're controlling the slide of these cars. That is just absolutely cracking to see. Now the LMP cars, oh wow, someone's getting a little bit stuck. Oh, big tank slapper there for Empower. And now he's got a lot of M LMP cars on this outside. He's going to be a little bit careful about how he does, how uh, he navigates those. As a reminder, it is up to the faster car to navigate their way past the slower one. It is not up to the slower cars to jump out of the way and indeed they're encouraged not to so that it makes the line of the faster cars much more easier to plan and predict so but even still when, when you've got a swarm of cars on your outside you you don't want to slide into them so that must have been a little bit of an interesting moment there for Empower yeah but, it's, uh, yeah, sorry a a leads away now by 11.3 seconds wow he really has uh, gotten to grips with the uh, LMP3 as it's charging off Rudy and Ruddy Bird and Smolder are still fairly close together. That's the battle for a second. Inferno and Aaron are roughly half a second apart in their LMPs as they come through the bus stop area through turn five. And then the rest of the field are fairly spread out with the exception of Scott Empower, as we previously saw. And Takuta is now on the back of Colonel McCoy. That is about battle for fourth in the GT4 class. Yeah, it seems like Conor McCoy's dropped off the back of uh, Andrex a little bit and fallen into the hands of Takuza. It's good to see a BMW in the GT4 field. So obviously there's a lot of Aston Martins and it's always nice to see a little bit of variety. So it's great oh. to see uh, Takuza picking that BMW and Empower picking the Ford Mustang. Seems like at this stage in the race that uh, Takuza seems to have a slight upper hand on Colonel McCoy at the moment. Seems to be pretty eager to try and find a way past. Uh, if I remember correctly, from my very limited experience of driving GT4 cars, the uh, the BMW is a pretty good quick car, but it's pretty slow in shifting up and down through the gearbox. It seems to be a little bit slower um, than the other cars. So even though it gets a initially a good run coming off of corners. When it actually comes to changing gear, they they lose out a little bit and get pegged back slightly, which is a little bit frustrating. Yeah, and not really something you could do a lot about. No. Smolder's on the move. Uh, because we've reset the lobby, I actually have the race feed box working, and it's just informed me that Smolder is the fastest in the first sector. So Smolder then really pressing on. And no sooner do I say that, that Inferno then goes and uh, grabs that... Uh, grabs that fastest section so we've got a few people that are trying to uh, it could be slipstream enable because uh, both Smolder and Inferno are chasing someone but we've got a few people then trying to close down but I, I'm just stunned by AD8's pace even despite the fact that the last time around ad and Ruddy Bird were <laughs> matched each other to the thousandths of a second yep so that's impressive in itself but I mean, it's good to see that, that ADAs isn't... I say he's not running off with it. He's got nearly 15 seconds worth of lead, but that's mainly because of that battle going on. And, of course, you know, whilst, the, whilst you're battling... Oh, dear, that's that's a rearranged Aston. Yeah, it is. It's not well, looking healthy. No, no, indeed. We'll check in with, uh, with the rest of our competitors. We won't just stare at the same few guys, or they are the guys are fighting. Still a fair way to go over an hour's worth of racing to fulfil. Let's see where everybody is. There is... Our race leader, ADA, is coming onto the back straight, heading down towards the bus stop. Then it is Ready Bird and Smolder in their battle for second, as previously mentioned. Then it is Aaron, who now has to accompanied by two LMPs. He's got Inferno directly behind him, and Brisanchi has closed in the meek. Brisanchi gained, wow, 1.2 seconds on Inferno last lap around. So Inferno had a bit of a problem, I'd have thought, and that's how Brisanchi closed back in on them. Then it is Minesco. He is eight seconds behind Brzezantic at the moment, and it's just starting to climb the hill through turns two and three. Matt Cooley in the uh, American livery Graf racing car. He is about 1.2 behind Minesco. They are settling into their rhythm. Then it is Flaming Parrot, who's got himself a penalty. We have three drivers on the board with a penalty. Two seconds for Flaming Parrot. 
he finds himself in ninth position, 19 seconds behind Matt Cooley. And our pulse, well, our front row sitter, Bo, down in 10th. What a. Just, just amazing that ha that just unraveled for him so quickly. And actually, Flaming Parrot had a terrible lap last time with a 49 9. So that's about 11 seconds off the pace of where the other LMPs are. So that's, that's actually the GT4 leaders he's chasing there. Yeah. I'm just wondering, uh, is Bo on the same lap as uh, Flaming Parrot in front of him? Do we know? Yes, he is. Mm, yes, he is, yes. So, he did, yeah, he must have not picked up too much damage uh, in that pit oh, he's stop. Been the pits, he's been through the pits already, hasn't he? That's why he's, he's uh, with that huge incident he had when he uh, hits uh, Jeremy. Well, uh, Jeremy. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, that's why he's working his way through the pits. But he's, he's getting back into the 38, so he's... Pretty well, and we have another pitter. It's Aaron. No obvious damage on the car, so I'm assuming that's planned. There's a little bit of damage on the side there. Oh, yeah. That's, um, that doesn't look like it would impact the car in any way. There may be a little bit of possibly rear end damage, so there could be some rear wing damage there, uh, which will get that repaired. But yeah, Bo in 10th place. He's only two positions away from being back into, into the points so that he sees working his way through the GT4 leaders, splitting the two of them at the moment as he comes into the final turn. Seems like he'll be hopping up ahead of Aaron. So Aaron's still in the pit stop, uh, or in the pit lane there, making his stop. So Bo is currently up into ninth place. I do believe that Bo will need to make another stop in this race. He won't be able to go the full distance. I could potentially be wrong there, actually, because I did just remember that last week uh, the LMP3 cars were able to do the full hour distance as well without uh, running into any fuel issues unless the guys just ran it close which I remember Bo did do he was very very marginal on fuel I think he came across the line with 0.1 litres of fuel <laughs> so it was very much lifting coasting in that last lap but yeah there you can see 71 litres just underneath that at the moment so uh yeah, although this is a bit of a fuel-hungry track, someone was saying in the chat. Um, I think he may, with a minute and seven... Uh, sorry, an hour and seven minutes remaining. He might be able to get to the end of the race on that? I don't know. We shall see. I wouldn't have thought so. I, I would expect him to be in again, personally. But yeah. probably a splash and dash towards the end. But we'll see. He may well do some amazing fuel-saving as the race progresses. Now that's the name I do recognise, I believe. It's a nice gentleman, didn't he migrate over from Xbox? I am not entirely sure. It's not a name I'm familiar with, other than obviously seeing him last week in round one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I recognise uh, Intergalactic gentleman from the forum. Uh, I, I've got it in my head that he's a, a, an Xbox migratee, so welcome to you. Oh, new fastest lap of the race by, as we were just talking about. Oh. He's done a 35.8, my goodness. He's actually Ooh. closed four seconds in on the lead. He's uh, oh, he's definitely on the move. So you expect, uh, we'll see how well Bo can uh, translate that into the result. Results, Aaron is back out on the field. That would be race leader Eddie Ace coming through in that distinctive green livery. Ooh. Reminds me of the Jaguar F1 team, that one. Yeah, uh, Aaron just caught the curve rather awkwardly and there was a big hop as he uh, came through the final turn and gave uh, the race leader plenty of room. But uh, yeah, it's... Like I said earlier at the start of the race, there's a lot of really nice liveries on these uh, LMP3 Ooh. cars. I do like them quite a lot. Logan, who is minding his own business, he was uh, also an early pitter. And finds himself 40 seconds behind Aaron, but 34 seconds ahead of Jay Beaches, who is the tail of the LMPs at the moment. And uh, he carries on going and will hopefully be able to catch back up with the rest of the MPs in the next few laps. Then it is our GT4s. Where are they? There they are. Scott and uh, Empower have been pretty much... Whoa! Empower got tired a little bit wide. That's Smolder. Oh, no, it's not Smolder. Big uh, I'm not sure who that is. I, Either way, they, they uh, had a wake-up call. gentleman, I believe that is. Oh, good call. Yes, it is indeed. Wow, that, that would have uh, made him a tad nervous because uh, Empower went a little while coming through turn six. Yep. Oh, that's, that's 88 again. Yep, I think that's his, the race leader. He's having a look down the inside. Empower's spotted them this time and given him 
ample room coming through the turn. Oh, there's uh, one of the other Ligiers coming through as well. Not entirely sure who that is, but uh, yeah. Oh, Milo in the pits with a rather bent looking uh, mm. Aston Martin. I can't believe Carlito is still out there. I don't think he's been to the pits yet because that car still looks. I mean, okay, the, the, the shell doesn't get repla uh, re repaired, but. Uh, he presses on nonetheless, <laughs> in fairness. So our top two's got an empower, are still locked to their battle. Andrix is only 3.3 or so behind it, and was lapping quicker than the pair of them in the last lap. So Ooh. it's not unfathomable that Andrix will join that particular battle at some stage. Uh, he gained, what, two, two tenths? tenths. Yeah. yeah, two yeah. tenths on Scott. Half a second on Empower, but Empower, we saw, was uh, getting out of the way. Oh, what's happening to the gentleman? He has found Aaron. Or he's had a problem and had to slow down and Aaron's come past him. I've just suddenly seen those two swap position. Uh, so. I think Intergalactic Tra Gentleman has been chasing down Aaron. I think Aaron was the guy who was just behind AB Ace on the previous lap uh, that was working his way through the traffic. So yeah, I think Intergalactic Gentleman has closed up a few seconds uh, on Aaron. Kenneth McCoy, fourth in the GT4s, is four seconds behind Andrex and is ahead of David Alex by around about seven seconds. Very distinctive green, green Aston. That's a, another bent Aston ahead, already ahead of him. And then there's our lead KTM of Nyla, who is another one with a penalty on the board. Two seconds for you, and two seconds for Dakuza as well. Uh, was it Dakuza? No, it was Milo, Milo and Nila. Beg your pardon, misread that. Yep. Flaming parrots in. That looks a fairly clean car, so... I mean, just, get uh, yeah, stop for fuel. Guess so. Oh, we've lost. Who did we just lose? We've lost somebody and he didn't come up on the board. We have lost one of our LMPs, I think. Uh, there is now 12. That's a bit of a shame. Dakuta continues to press on in. That's had an argument with something a little solid since we last looked at it. Oh, you, ow, yes, <laughs> on that uh, right side. But, I mean, that can be done by exactly what he's just done there, just taking that corner slightly too wide and skimming the wall. So, Dakuza pressing on in the M3, and then it is Gnarly in the Aston, the red and white Aston. He is 24 seconds behind Dakuza and 27 seconds ahead of the second KTM of Roda, who leads 30 seconds over that uh, bent, re <laughs> shaven green Aston we saw earlier of Milo. And then it is Carlito at the tail of the field, who's had several arguments with several very solid things, as Brzezancic brings his car in. Yep, 46 litres of fuel, so I think this could be just a potentially a splash, and, well, not necessarily a splash and dash, but more a change of tyres. This is a race that did start at 7pm in game time, uh, so it is in and around sunset. There is just oh. the one times real time time acceleration. Uh, so it will get later and it will get a little bit cooler, but uh, shouldn't be too much that they need to change tyres for. We've got uh, Scott that we're riding on board with at the moment, looking all over the back of Empower in that Ford Mustang directly there in front of us. The two guys have been battling out for the lead in class for pretty oh. much the entire duration of the race. As, uh, they go and launch the car into is that, the corner. Is that Logan? Uh, no. No, it isn't. So, why, what I just went ooh at is whoever that is behind Andres just smashed into the wall trying to come past him, but Andres ah. wasn't doing anything wrong. It was just they, they exa did exactly what I was talking about earlier, just taking that turn nine a little bit too wide and bounced off the wall. It, or as I said, skimmed off the wall last time. It was very much a, an impact for... I say whoever that is trying to come past Andrex. Oh yep. my goodness me! Scott pushing Empower up the hill. He's now got the inside. Oh, Empower may have a slowdown penalty. He may have ran wide on the exit of turn one. He's oh, given that position yay. up to Scott, and yeah, yeah, he's definitely got a slowdown. He's trying to bleed off the speed before getting to the uh, the bus stop chicane. Very unfortunate for him. Indeed. So is this going to be an opportunity for Scott to start to run off into the distance? With how close those two have been, I wouldn't be at all surprised if uh, Empower closes that in as Milo brings his car into the pit again. 
from uh, say the tail end of the GT4s. Bo is now on the back of Minesco. This is for fifth position. And as they come past the, the black KTM, who I think it was also slowing down, possibly for the same reason we just saw M Power. But will Minesco put up a fight? He's perfectly entitled to, but again, you realistically know who you're in a fight with. Oh, gets a bit snaky, but uh, well, he doesn't have the choice now. Left the door open on the inside, and Bo flew through it. That's fifth position then for Bo. Very nice. Yep, make a very, very good progress as he's uh, trying to make his race recovery after the unfortunate incident at the start. Seeing a couple of the drivers actually in the chat. Uh, TPW is there, so is Matt Cooley. Matt Cooley ha was uh, having some, looks like FPS and screen tearing issues all over the place. And uh, oh, Bern Bernetto was one of the other drivers who has uh, lost connection. And then, yeah, TPW has uh, got taken out by a lagging, uh, lagging car that sent him into the air uh, and unfortunately clipped through the map. Oh dear. I, I did see a blue dot right in the middle of nowhere and thinking that was some major impact or something gone horribly <laughs> wrong there. He, he, he's gone to, he, he's driving home already, he's off of the car park. So Empower then doing what he can to close back in that gap that's now stand, it was just under a second between himself and the Aston. And he certainly can do it, he's proven how quick he is in uh, these circumstances. So that uh, GT4 lead is not done at all. Just it looks so effortless when I know when what happens when I try it, it. It's anything but. It's mental soaring on the wheel for me to control a slide like that. It just looks so, you know, so effortless for him. Yeah, I I'm think. Not jealous at all. I think it's <laughs> just the uh, the replay and spectator mode is probably. I think the attitude in terms of the like the car's direction is correct. I think it's just the front wheels that are a little bit deceptive. Ah, so it may be just perfectly not calm and normal. It just doesn't quite look it from outside. Yeah, correct. And just looking at Bo's lap times at the moment, he was about a second slower than the leader on the previous lap. That gap's been hanging in around a, about a minute between uh, Aid the Ace and Bo. But mm. uh, he's got some very strong pace. He's working his way up through the field. Obviously, a couple of guys have pitted. So he's gained some positions through that, and I'm pretty sure that... Bo will need to pit himself again, as as you mentioned earlier. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he actually comes out, but it looks like he may be actually picking up a couple of points this race as he's coming up to the back of Andrex to pass and put another lap on him. Oh, was that? Well, goodness me, he's closed that gap in already. He has. His, uh, M Powers now. The battle is on once again. It's, I'm assuming that Scott just... Wow, Empower just did a 51.7. I don't think any of the GT4s have gotten anywhere near that kind of pace previously. Now, admittedly, I haven't been kind of watching it too much, but that's an absolutely stonking lap time from Empower. I think Scott may have had one of the green Astons to, to navigate round, but that's reintroduced this battle once again. Oh, wow, now that, that certainly was a slide. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah. oh, very nicely done, and once again, Scott's probably just thinking, what do I have to do to get away from you? Yeah, it's really interesting, because obviously the Aston Martins last week had the legs over the KTM. The KTM was really, really good through the corners, as we see uh, Bo working his way through the uh, the leaders in GT4 here as well. So actually, Empower's having a look around the outside of Scott into this long, sweeping right-hander of the toe, turn seven come through the boot section of the uh, of the circuit but um yeah the, the Aston Martin or shall I say the KTM looked really good in the corners last week and the Aston looked at quite a handful but had the legs on the straights this time round it seems like the Aston Martin seems okay through the corners but the the Ford is equaling it but then is also much better in a straight line JP just came in a little while ago, so repair, possibly new tyres, but certainly top of your fuel tank for you. I didn't see what the, how much fuel the GT4 started with. Uh, Have they got 100 litre tanks like the GT3s? I think or more than 100 litres. If you jump to Scott, see how much fuel he's got. 
So he's got, yeah, 68.4. I know Scott tends to run a full fuel tank. He did so uh -huh. last week. Um, he's doing so again this week. You see that M Power's got a little bit less uh, with 55.6 litres. Andrex is Scott's teammate, and I know that Andrex likes to take uh, just about the right amount of fuel as we're seeing. M Power having to look to the outside of oh. Scott coming into the bus stop. Yeah, that wasn't really going to work. He wasn't far enough alongside, and that gap that was there on the outside was only just going to diminish. So, yeah, very unfortunate for M Power. Andrex looks like he's taken a full tank as well. He's got 65 litres, so mm. he's taken a bit more than M Power. But um, I imagine he, they'll need to do a splash and dash in this race. It's not, not going to be a case of one car's any thirstier than, than another, is it? Uh, potentially. I mean, Ford Mustangs aren't known for their fuel economy, <laughs> fuel that's economy. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's, what, 13 litres difference. That, that seems a tad extreme uh, if, it's da if it was down to that. But, yeah, I, I, I think it's a fair bet that Impound may well have started with a lighter lighter car, which makes Scott's effort, you know, keeping Empower at bay that much more impressive. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how much fuel they come out with in the pit stops as well, to get an idea as to what their fuel usage actually is. But, um, oh, talking oh. of pit stops, Empower coming into the pits. Yeah, that caught me by surprise, certainly, and uh, Scott will no doubt welcome that. Yeah, interesting. I think Empower may just be looking for a bit of space. He's seen that yeah. he's gone half a second quicker than Scott on a on a good lap. He's probably thinking if he can get himself into a load of clear air, he can just run his pace yeah. and undercut Scott and get himself a decent lead. Good call. Good call, and uh, yeah, Andrex gained about half a second dish on Scott last time around, so I don't think it was a great lap by Scott, in fairness, but uh, still leads by 4.7 seconds over his teammate. We're looking at now, gliding his way through the through the bus stop once again. The field fairly spread out now. We've, we're down to 22 cars now, and we've lost uh, we lost another of our LMPs, but we have 11 of each now. We got 10 LMP3s. No, 11. 11. Jay 11? Peters is still there. He just, he's now, he, uh, he yes. had a pit stop earlier that dropped him right into the middle. It, that catches me out as well. Oh, speaking. Doing a bit of lawn mowing as well. What's his out there? Yeah, a little bit of grass cutting with that uh, front splitter. One thing that I have noticed is Bo is back down into the third. Well, he was back down into the 35s. He's now back down into the 37s and is Ooh. lapping a good, well, this time around a second and a half quicker. Then the race leader, Aid the Ace, is actually... That looks like Empower going down the inside of Neela for fifth position. So Empower did come out in and around some traffic after his pit stop. As Neela's having a little bit of a look back at the Mustang. You can see the cornering difference there, but you'll see the Mustang just pull car lengths away on, this, on the straights ahead of the KTM as the... KTM can't really hand, uh, hold a candle to him in a straight line, which is quite unfortunate as uh, quite a lot of the American tracks have quite long straights and are quite power demanding, although Long Beach will be an interesting mm. one because there's a lot of tight and twisty sections uh, with those walls rather close. So it'll be interesting to see how that car fares uh, mm. in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. I, I, I have commented on Long Beach once, so uh, I'll be really looking forward to seeing how that race unfurls. Nyla looks like he's doing his best to hang on to the back of the Mustang, but uh, it's going to be quite a tall ask, I think, for you know, KTM to stay in touch with the Mustang, certainly seeing the pace that uh, Empower has put on. How much fuel do you go? He's 90 litres on board, so pretty much... Uh, Put in what he feels he needs to to get to the end of the race. I would think 90 litres would probably get him to the end now. So unless he has a major incident, we won't be seeing him back in the pits again. Inferno's Inferno has uh, lost a position to Bo, so Bo now up to fourth, but he's got a he's got 30 seconds to close down to Smolder. He certainly can do it with the uh, pace he's showing, but uh, this is very much the embodiment of never give up. Yeah, definitely. He's uh, 
Yeah, in that fourth position now, as you say, so he's got some clear air. It looks like the next bunch of cars up in front of him are all GT4 cars. And there's his view on board. He's got a bit of a crap windscreen from that earlier impact. But the car looks very compliant, very stable through the corners, just absolutely just chucking it in and the thing's just absolutely sticking. Placing the car exactly where he wants it. They're such great cars to drive, the LMPs. Uh, the, the LMP3s. Ironically, I, I, I'm i okay with the LMP3s. I love the LMP3s. The LMP1s that terrify the crap out of me, but I'm okay with it. It's the, LMP, it's the LMP2s I struggle with. I, I To the day, I don't know why. I always seem to struggle with the LMP2s. They... I can kind of see why they can be quite loose on the rear, especially downshifting. I tend to find that to take quite a bit out of the um, engine braking to make them work and kind of fiddle with the diff a little bit. As we see, uh, that's Nila diving into the pits to make his pit stop. There he goes. But uh, yeah, the LMP2 cars are good fun to drive. They don't quite have the same amount of uh, downforce as the, obviously the LMP1s. They just produce insane amounts of downforce and have huge amounts of grip and then they've got stupid, <laughs> stupid amounts of power as well to go with it. But yeah, the LMP2s are they are a bit more of a raw experience and a bit more of a driver's kind. You kind of have to man handle them a little bit. Vanessa goes in. 28 litres still in the tank, so I would imagine that that car looks absolutely showroom clean. So uh, it doesn't look like he's had an argument with anything. Not many that haven't, actually, in fairness. I'm keeping an eye also on M Power. Where is he? Uh, M Power 51 8. So Empower has got out and absolutely gone on it. So I think you were absolutely right, Yorkie, when he wanted some space. So uh, prompted when he came in. He's absolutely going for it now. Oh, a little bit deep coming through turn seven, but uh, nothing is going to lose him too much time. But it's all going to be where... Where's he gone? There he is. Scott still has a guy. He's still not coming in either. That last lap, 152.7, so very respectable. Andrex with a 53.5, so a little slower on that one, but still 47 minutes of the race to go. We are approaching the halfway stage. Colonel McCoy, a decent lap there, 52.8. So he's, uh, well, mind his own business, but still pressing on, but yeah, uh, Empower most certainly going for the undercut. Yeah, he's got uh, Dave Alex about two and a half seconds up the road. That's quite wide, and that could be a slowdown. Potentially for M Power. Doesn't seem he's like he's slowing anyway. down though. Yeah, he's uh, continuing on. Uh, what was this previous lap time? 52.2, uh, so decent pace there. Still half a second quicker than Scott was on the previous lap, Ooh. so he's, he's able to work his way up through the field relatively quickly. As we can see, Dave Alex there in the foreground with M Power hunting him down in the background. I don't think Dave will probably put up too much of a fight, uh, knowing that he'll need to pit at some point as well. And obviously it will just cost him more time to the drivers in front, although he is a good 20 seconds behind Colonel McCoy, so um, unless he can really find some extra pace, it may be a bit of a struggle for Dave Alex to close up onto the back of Colonel McCoy in front. Yeah, I think so. Again, realistically, you know who you're in a fight with. And uh, Dave Ellis will, will acknowledge that uh, Empower really isn't who he needs to be targeting. But oh. ADA has continued to extend his lead. And it is now 25 seconds. I mean, that goes in again. Interesting. Hmm. Um, one odd. Yeah. Uh, one thing I was going to point out, ADA popped himself into the mid-35s. As well, 35-4 on the previous lap. Uh, Bo has gone and lost a good five, actually more than that, about seven or eight seconds to aid the ace because Bo was under yeah. a minute by a couple of seconds, um, probably about 10, 15 minutes ago. So I think it may have just been traffic, caught him at an unfortunate point and kind of struggled to work their way past. But uh, yeah, aid the ace, 25 second lead now has over Ruddy Bird. 
you can pretty much just coast, but not quite. But uh, you can pretty, like ignore Top Gear or something, and uh, he would still be fairly comfortable. There is M Power, that's uh, Aviators coming past, along with Dave Alex. Ooh, behave. There we go. And that, that's actually quite a good demonstration as to why you need the GT4s to, well, you need the slower car class, whatever that is, to behave themselves and to do a predictable line. ADA is committed quite early to the passing move. If suddenly Dave Ellis was trying to be helpful and jumped out, tried to jump out of the way, he'd have actually jumped in front of ADA and caused a hell of a big crash. So there is exactly why the slower class are always told, stay on the racing line, don't jump out of the way, unless you do it so early that the, the, the faster car can see exactly what you're doing. But generally the faster car will need you to be uh, well, another prime example there. That that could have that could have got a little nasty. Yeah, it could have. It's in a way the slower class cars just need to pretend that the other cars aren't on the track. But obviously, oh, in no, moments yeah. like that, you do need to be wary <laughs> and obviously have your eyes and your mirrors to make sure that you are spotting those drivers coming up behind you for when they do poke down the inside. So we're starting to see a few penalties popping up on the board. Brady Bird's got a second, so is Brzezancic. Logan has got a second penalty, so has Colonel McCoy and, and Empower as well. They've both now got a one second penalty. There's a couple more that I didn't quite catch there. But uh, Empower on the move. Oh, thank you. Uh, Neela got three <laughs> seconds, two seconds for Gnarly, and then one second for Milo, who's last in the GT4 class. But yeah, Empower's now managed to get himself up into fourth place in the GT4 class and managed to pop himself ahead of. Dave Alex. Quite considerably, that's two and a half seconds between the two. Yeah, it was M Power's penalty I spotted earlier. It's uh, only a small one. It's probably the one that you, you clocked earlier when he went too wide on that last turn. It does take a while to count down. There's Intergalactic Gentleman. Coming in from eighth position in the LMPs. Uh, 30 litres still on board, so he won't need, necessarily need to top it off, but uh, it kind of depends on. He, the won't, he is taking fuel. He'll take fuel, but he won't uh, refill the way out of thought. Unless, uh, well, he might do. 63. So. Go. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Go. Go. The lollipop man is instructed to go. <laughs> I think you could go. He's going to stand there and admire the scenery for a while. Yep. Maybe taking a quick break to uh, stretch his arms and legs. There's mm -hmm. Peaches coming into the first turn. It's an interesting and slightly deceptive corner. There's, it's quite nice to hook up the inside, and there's, you can kind of almost skirt the curb on the inside, but it's too tiered. And if you do catch it nastily, especially in, in these LMP cars where you kind of, you want to be ultra smooth, and you don't want to, clobber the curves too much because that will just take away the downforce, going through the corners. So yeah, you want to try and be as smooth as possible, and obviously clipping those curves isn't going to be. Uh, too great for that. Here we see Scott coming up through, up over the hill, turns two and three. He's got That's a great fly collection he's got on the front of the car. Yeah, there's uh, bits of marble and rubber as well. There's probably a few bugs hang lingering in the air at this time of night as well. There is Andrex, <laughs> just under three seconds, separates the leading pair at the moment. Andrew, it's gained a second on his teammate last time around. Ah, interesting. And M Power sits currently around 30, rough mass, 32 seconds behind the, the class leader. And there he is, being passed by one of the Janettas. I, I, I can't get enough of that roar as they all come past. The only one that, the only one ironically is the odd one now is the KTM. Oh, that didn't go quite Empower's way. He might get a penalty because he did kind of jump over the last apex coming out of that bust up area. Little bit uh, squirrely. Uh, seems to be okay. Seems to be pressing on at the moment. So I don't think he did get that slow down penalty. I think it's if they do just take too much curb, then yeah, they'll probably uh, get that slowdown warning. There's still 50 litres in Scott's car. And 45 in Andrex's, so. Yeah. It's not. The pit stop's not mandatory. 
No. So if, if they feel like it, and if they can eat the tires and the and the fuel out, they 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 can try and go to the line. And again, Scott's lost another significant chunk of time over Andrex. It's uh, six or seven tenths that time. Yeah, I think maybe Scott has eased off a little bit. It's possibly doing a little bit of fuel saving. Obviously, being in the uh, in the slipstream of M Power and battling with him earlier on probably would have helped preserve a little bit of fuel. Whereas Andrex was battling with Colonel McCoy earlier, but he did manage to get himself up into third position within the first few laps, and has been running without anybody really in front of him to help him along uh, for pretty much the entirety of this race as Dave Alex is trundling down the pit lane to make his pit stop. Logan's in as well, so a few people choosing now to get their stop done. Hey, is, I was going to say, ADS has got to be running the tank fairly low. It's not 12 litres on, he'll get another half dozen laps at least out of that, but uh, he'll be in soon. He's lost a whole load of time. As well, he's now he less than nineteen, uh, less than twenty seconds between him and Ruddy Bird. Yeah. Having it's about six seconds, he's lost. Yeah, uh, Ruddy Bird was eight tenths quicker on the previous lap, so maybe A. The Ace has just turned the pace down a little bit and just trying to reek out a little bit of fuel. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that gap between the lead pair is uh, come down a little bit. The gap between. Aid the ace. There you go, 145 on the previous lap. That's where he lost all his time. Oh dear. He must yeah. have had a mistake somewhere along the line. Half spin. Yeah, it must have been. You don't lose that much time being stuck behind someone, not unless you're stuck behind them for half a lap. It is uh, not exactly likely. And oh, Andrex, he's now within a second of Scott. So I wonder if Scott's got a problem. Scott's got more fuel on board than Andrex does. So either he's just, he's just backing off exactly as you say, or I wonder if he's actually, maybe he's hit the wall, he's got some damage on there. There is some speculation in the chat that I'm seeing that Scott is planning on doing the entire race on this ah. one tank of fuel. And he has well. got a little bit more than Andrex, but um, if he can last the remaining 37 minutes, that would be very, very impressive. But that could explain his pace. He could be doing a bit more lifting and coasting to try and save that fuel and try and eke it out a little bit more just to make sure that he's safe when it comes towards the end of the race and he doesn't need that splash and dash. So this is going to bring Andrex into play then because they can then essentially just kind of slipstream off each other for a while. You know, a bit more coordinated than we were seeing with uh, Scott and Empower. Of course, they were fighting one another. But they could really play the, you know, play the slipstream game. Andrex could drag Scott along for a while and if... Andrex starts to burn a little bit too much fuel. They're going to swap around. There he goes. So that'll be a simple move. We've just lost someone from the race. We've lost one of our GT4s. Uh, who did we lose? I'm always terrible at trying to identify this. Uh, it can be quite difficult with these driver tags. <laughs> Sometimes they don't always 100% match up with their actual names. Hopefully they'll uh, appear in the in the chat and uh, inform us of what's going on. But yeah, I, I wonder whether Andrex may will not necessarily try to sprint off from his teammate and just give him a little bit of slipstream to help with that fuel conservation. Although, if that's the case, surely it should be the other way around as Andrex has less fuel on board. Yeah. Uh, well, it, we will unless see. Andrex is actually planning on making a splash and dash towards the end of the race and he is just trying to help out his teammate although I don't think that Scott is quite close enough to Andrex to really be making full effects of that he's about half a second off he'll be getting a little bit of slipstream but probably not the amount that he actually he actually wants mm. but yeah. I'm looking at the time left and the fuel he's got and I'm not convinced he needs to save any it'd be interesting to see he's got 44 litres now 35 minutes near as damn it still on the clock. I'm going to see what's what the difference between the numbers are when he comes to lap again because I'm not sure he needs to fuel save. Which kind of leads me to believe he's got a problem. I think he is doing it just to be safe. Just so that he knows that in his in the back of his own mind that he will have that fuel for the end because I've had it a couple of times in endurance races where I've like okay I'll try and eke out the fuel a little bit 
and see how it goes. Knowing that I will need to pit at some point, but then you kind of, you do kind of half wonder, do I still have enough fuel? Am I doing the right amount of fuel yeah. saving to be getting the target that I'm actually wanting? I, I mean, who could forget, you know, last season at Monza? Yeah, well, that was me just putting the right amount of fuel in in the final yeah. stop. It, that wasn't any, like, planned uh, strategy in terms of lifting and coasting to try and fuel save. That was just, I need this amount of fuel for my final stop. I'll probably chuck on an extra couple of litres just to be safe. And, yeah, it worked out. I mean, having a bigger fuel tank than the Audis, I rather, one of the merging helped you quite a bit. Yes. <laughs> that too. I think uh, the guys just kind of got their fuel calculations slightly wrong. Because you, kind of, you do practice and you do learn and look at how much fuel you're using per lap and then you do factor that in and like do the calculation and work out how much you actually need. But then in and around that you do also obviously come across traffic, you're not always running 100% at your own pace and not quite always using the same amount of fuel. And also with that formation lap at the start, your average fuel consumption per lap is lower than what you would use in a practice session running in clear air doing consistent lap times within half a second of each other so the numbers do throw you a little bit and then yeah you're kind of trying to work out the amount that you actually need on the fly no, and trying wham. to count that into your pit stop as you see eight the ace coming into the pits with 4.3 oh. liters eight. Ooh. andrex is andrex led by two seconds just now and he's, he's now and he no longer is. He's Vasco on McCoy challenging him for second. Something's he, happened to Andres. He was, he was nearly two seconds ahead. I mean, look at his lap time last time around. 51.9. He's got a lot he's, of damage on the rear. Oh, no! I see a lot of damage on the rear of Andrex's cast. Maybe he caught a curve wrong, or there may have been an incident with an LMP3. Um, that has either... There's been a significant impact on the rear of his car, either from an LMP3 car, another... Mm. GT4 car or whatever, or he's swapped ends and gone backwards into the wall, which would explain oh why Colonel McCoy has managed to um, close up quite yeah. considerably. Yeah, and that's... Oh. Is Andrix going to come in this time to sort that out? With half an hour still on the clock, might be worth yes. him doing. Yeah, here he comes. Oh, what a shame, because I mean, he looked like he was set to kind of... He got himself nearly two second lead over his teammate and, uh, oh, we've just lost Logan. Logan came into the pits and uh, retired his car. Now down to 10 cars apiece in each category. A bit of a shame. Nyla is in a battle Ooh. with Dave Alex. Wow, that's uh, an unusual line by one of the LMPs. Yep. I think the groundskeeper will be having words with him <laughs> later on. Indeed. Yeah, Andrex could uh, be in there a while, unfortunately. Empower, that puts him back up into third then. A 51-7, gained three seconds on both Scott and Conan McCoy ahead of him. Or two and a half at least. So he is absolutely charging on. He's got 16 seconds to get to Conan McCoy. And then a further five seconds to get to Scott. Andrex is back out, so that was not a long stop at all. If there was a big old chunk of damage on the back. He's taken, well, he's taken up to 54 litres now, so... I think Andrex would have certainly been playing the uh, fuel risk pretty close. How much fuel has Scott got now? Scott has got 39. 39. Interesting. And there's 30 I minutes left remaining in the race. 39 meters. I'm not. I'm not 100% convinced they will be able to make it. We need to figure out how much fuel he's using per lap, roughly. So Indeed, if we can yeah. kind of somewhat keep an eye on him. <laughs> use reference point. Obviously, he's just coming up to the start finish line, so that's probably the best, yeah. the best place. But he'll, um, he'll pit. Uh, he'll 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 spite us and pit at the end of the lap. Nope, no nope. sign of it. So let's see what he does over the line. So I'm going to say 38.2, roughly. Yeah, There's yeah, a, I'll go with that. That was a 53.5 last time around. So we'll check back in with Scott before the end of the end of the lap. Lineup still on the back of Dave Alex. Battle for sixth position in the GT4s. See if they're able to swap back around. Andrex finds himself six seconds behind De Cousin now. Hopefully with a uh, slightly more behaving Aston. 
ADA's is uh Ah, it's a strange view. Uh, ADA's has had a bit of a problem, I'd say. I would agree with you there, considering he's, he's stuck in the gravel. He seems to be underway again. Whoop, see Daisy. That Easy was the does weirdest it. camera angle I've ever seen. But Bo is right with him. He's not far off. Yeah, six and a half seconds. And but Bo's, just seeing... Bo's only got ten litres, though. Yeah, so Bo will definitely need to pit again. But uh, what's the gap? 18 seconds between Bo and Ready Bird. Bo could yep. recover back up into second place with his pace and the amount of time that's remaining. There is Scott. Uh, yeah, keep looking at that. ADAs is in. Is he? Ah, he's come in. So he probably. Interesting. That's going to really shake up the uh, lead battle. I'm keeping an eye on Scott as well for his uh, fuel. What did we say? 38.2. Uh, it was, yes. So it's coming up to at... two litres. He's not going to have enough. He needs to pit. He will need to pit for the end of the race, I think. You reckon? Yeah. But considering they're doing, what, 1 minute 50 lap times, he's using over two litres per lap. He's got 20, yeah, he's... 28 yeah, minutes remaining. Yeah, he's, it's he's really close, feel... but I think he yeah, is. Yeah, he won't make it. Yeah, you're right. He won't make that. Oh, ADA is now down to fourth. Oh, what a shame. He's uh, taken on a lot of fuel. With that as well. uh, um, yeah, unless you're going to burn a hell of a lot of it, that's that's a little bit excessive there, right? Eh? But that brought Bo right back into it. Yes, it has, and I'm seeing in the chat as well. Uh, Logan has disconnected. He's appeared in the chat, but he had uh, a slight lag moment, missed his breaking point, and went into the rear end of Andrex. That's what caused the damage. Oh no. For him. ADA seems to... There he goes. I was going to say, he seemed to be stuck in the pit lane, but um, it seems like ADA is yeah, repairing some damage somewhere along the line. That's going to cost him a lead. A lot of time. That's, a good, that's over a minute behind the leader now. Oh, that's very close to that pit exit line. You don't want to be running over over that. Obviously, Bo does need to pit, but yeah, you're looking... What are they you, doing? 35s. Yeah, you look at about 1 minute 20 between 8 oh, and... Oh, that is going to be close between 8 the Ace and it was, what, 6 -ish seconds after Aid had gotten himself back out of the gravel trap between himself and Bo. So, yeah. Bo, I think it's fair to say, will not be in the pits as long as, as Aid was, but that could potentially be a real scrap for the lead. Yeah can potentially. It all depends on uh, Bo's pit stop, what he actually does there in terms of fuel. Obviously if he gets everything right and only puts in the amount of fuel that he actually needs for the end of the race and doesn't take tyres, he should be good and he'll be ahead of 8th the ace. Um, it just, it'll be where he comes out in relation to Ruddy Bird and Smolder. He'll probably be behind the pair of them but how close he'll be to the back of Smolder we do not quite know yet so we have to keep an eye on Bo for when he does pit. 1 minute 12 behind the leader now at ADA. So that's how much time he lost. So nearly a minute 20 he lost overall. From being in the lead by a few seconds to then being that far behind. Oh, Ooh. that's a strange... That was a weird line that Aid had there. Yeah, uh, I had a slight bit of lag there. Yeah, that looked really strange. Aaron's in. I think not for the first time either. And uh, Jay Peaches is coming again. That's uh, Bo. 36-0. On the board last time. 34-7. Fastest Whoa. lap of the race. Bo is... Well, he, he's got to come in next time. He's only got four and a half left. Oh, dear. That's... Uh, I know it's Dave Alex. No, no it's Milo. Uh, they do have the same colour car. Yes, they do. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Because Milo's a slightly more reshape, and that's someone getting stuck behind Dave Alex. Dave Alex is fairly close to that battle with uh, Nyla as well, who he's been involved with at the KTM. Yep. And as we saw, he's in the pit already, and out he comes. Minesco's going to come through. There is Minesco. He's going to come up into seventh place, I think. Oh no, he's a he's a lap down from Aaron, so no he won't, he just unlapped himself from. Interesting. Uh, those pictures that I'm seeing in the pit lane. Yeah, Bo 
blistering lap time. That pace, I think he may, it's either going to be this lap or just the next lap that he's going to be in. He, he might he be able to forget. Do. Yeah, I'm hoping he doesn't forget either. <laughs> that'll be, uh, that'll be whoop, very Whoa. unfortunate as he uh, gets caught up on the cab. The frustrating thing about these LMP3 cars is they're so low to the ground that it is really awkward when you do end up straddling a curb like that because it just mm. scrapes along the floor on the underside and it just hops the car all over the place and yeah you feel like you have no grip it looks like Bo is actually coming into this pit lane this yeah. time round so you called it right KK JP does come out right in between Scott and Colonel McCoy as they're the GT4 leaders all gonna be where does Bo reappear Ready Bird will not want to come into the pits again for the remainder of the race, so Bo needs his pit crew to be godlike. Yep, he hopes that he's got the uh, pit strategy sorted to be taking on exactly the right amount of fuel that he wants and not any more to hold it any longer. Any more than that? Yes, he will. Seems like That'll do it. Into fuel. That's a good stop. That is Ready a good Bird stop. Has yeah, Ready Bird has gone into the lead as predicted. Smolder. Yes, Smolder. He's taking a position. Where is AD Ace? AD Ace has only just come out of turn seven, so that's yeah. how badly it's gone for AD Ace. But. Is, mm. Bo is just behind Smolder. Look, half a second between the two. There is Smolder. So Bo is now eyes on the prize for the top spot. 23 minutes. He's done that 34 previously, so he could potentially pull that in. But that's Bo has just got to drive his car to death. Oh, diving on the inside. He's going to try and box Smolder oh, in the no. Aston. Oh no! He tried to box the Aston. That uh, use the accent to a little bit. Oh. Try that again. Oh, and a bit of bit more impact for Bo. Oh no! He's uh, letting Smolder through. Smolder has gone through. So Bo will now get back on it, but that's going to cost him a big old handful of time. Oh, what a shame for Bo. And for Smolder, in fairness. Yeah, big shame for the both of them. I think Bo was a little bit tentative. The gap was kind of there, and he was kind of half looking at it, but he probably should have backed out of that one and just let Smolder deal with the traffic, get both of them past, and then have a look at really trying to work his way through. It's the whole thinking of the bigger picture, planning ahead and thinking further down the line. Risk versus mm. reward. And I think uh, Bo was just a little bit too eager there and made the mistake and ended up making contact with Smolder. Very unfortunate for both of them. Oh, this battle is coming on again. M Power is now 11 seconds behind Scott and gained three, nearly three seconds on the GT4 leader last time around. What's Scott's so fuel load, though? 28. He is fuel saving massively. You can like hear him that. riding on the uh, on the clutch. On the clutch, yeah. Yeah. He's just wow. Oh, this is going to be so. Yeah, he's definitely either he's got to do some massive fuels. It's not worth it. Look mate. at that. Look at that. He's just coasting so badly for so long. It's not worth it. He's losing. No, he's so losing too much so time. Long. Yeah, he's he, going to have to come in. It's better to just decide now to just do the splash and mm. dash and just press on because. He's going to end up losing positions to um, Colonel McCoy, possibly his teammate Andrex mm. as well. Nilo could be in and around there. Um, yeah, it's... He's not coming in though. No, he's not. He's still pressing on. He's persevering with it for now, but he needs to make this decision sooner or later to give him more time after the pit stop to actually gain that time back. I don't think he can... I don't think he can do it. I don't think he can go to the end. I don't think he can either. I, I, I can't see how. I really can't. Unless... Oh, wow. M Powers <laughs> threw the Mustang to the apex. He, he made it stick, to be fair. Yeah, another sub-52 lap time from M Power. He is absolutely charging on. He's got nothing to worry about except for the walls. It's the only thing M Power's got to worry about now. And also keeping an eye on Andrex. Three and a half seconds behind Colonel McCoy. Andrex could well get back on the podium. Which uh, was such a shame considering he was leading the class. But he may well still count himself, you know, happy with that. He won't be happy that uh, he had an LMP introduced to his tail, but unfortunately lag moments affect the best of them, so it wasn't really anybody's fault. It's just a bit un unlucky. 
Let's have a look at the penalty count as well while we're at it. So still one for Ruddy Bird, two for Inferno, one for Brazantic, one for Aaron, two for Minesco, uh, one for Empow, one for Conan McCoy, three for Dave Alex, three for Nyla, and one for Milo. As Minesco is in the pits again. Oh, that'll be why this time. There's no rear wing. That's yeah. pretty important in these LMP3 cars. <laughs> Certainly at a at a, a track where it's got some decent speed corners in it. So, yeah, that, that's brought your day to an end. Bo is a second off the back of Smolder. Yep. Banging in the lap times was a good eight Ooh. temps. Oh, that's a bit of uh, GT4 traffic there. With, uh, I believe that was Andrex and Nilo. But, yeah, Bo now within half a second of... Smolder in front of him. This has played very nicely into his hands. It's kind of the ebb and flow of multi-class racing. Sometimes the traffic works massively in your favour. Sometimes it goes massively against you. It's all just... Oh, no, that's the KTM getting sideways in the background. Hopefully just about managed to keep it out the wall, I think. No, it wasn't oh, Nyla. It was the uh, Marauder. Marauder. Oh, yeah. dear. He's underway again. It doesn't look like there was any damage to the front of his car, but, um, yeah, very unfortunate for him. It's what, horrible when you have one of those spins because it just feels so slow and clumsy. And there's yeah. nothing you can do about it until the car oh. comes to a halt. Bo getting a little bit sideways on the exit there, but managing to hold on to that. He wants Smolder. Hopefully he'll be able to uh, not get that slight uh, tanglement that he had with Smolder last time around. Yeah, 36.9. So he gained 2.1 on Ruddy Bird last time around. So sub 10 seconds. Is a uh, gap to leader with 18 minutes to go. It does carry so much more speed coming into the inner loop, the bus stop section. This is where they had the contact last time, but both of them threw it cleanly. It certainly seems like there wasn't really too much damage picked up for either driver, as far as I can tell, just looking at them at a glance mm. and at their lap times. But um, they could have some small amount of uh, damage. But uh, yeah, the boat. Pressing on at the moment, just eyeing up his competition in front of him, trying to figure out where his weak spots are. And I imagine in the next couple of laps, he'll probably try to mount an attack, especially if traffic starts to come into play as well and holds up Smolder and breaks his momentum a little bit. Oh, pining the pressure on. And Smolder may fancy the, uh, you know, fancy a chance of defending, even though there's still quite a few minutes left. There is M Power. That uh, distinctive blue Mustang. Uh, interesting. Some Smolder stuck to the inside line that time. I think Bo. Empower could be a factor into turn one. Oh, here we go again. This uh, Bo trying to box Smolder behind a GT4 again. It didn't go well from last time. Oh, Smolder just managed to jump out from behind Empower. The uh, Mustang driver, knowing that both of both the LMPs are there, he, he could be. You know, you, you you plan for one of them coming past, but it could be easy to forget for the second one being there. But he did, he saw there were two there, and that battle then rages on. Speaking of M Power, he's gained another 1.4 on Scott. 8.6 is that gap now with 16 minutes left. That's going to be close. What's Scott's fuel amount? 21. As long as he, basically, as long as he keeps the liter amount more than the amount of minutes left, which is still going to be the, an insane amount of fuel saving going on, it, it's doable. Yep. Oh, Bo oh. already had uh, Bo already had Smolder. Yep, they've managed to swap positions. He's managed to get through. Uh, Bo now up into second place. He's 11.2 seconds behind the leader, Ruddy Bird. He may be able Might to actually it. get the win. Yeah, mm -hmm. if he can crack the pace back up to the 35s, the 34s, like he had been doing early run in the race he could close in on Ruddy Bird it all depends on the traffic and the clear air and just how focused it's going to be oh Dave Alex has had some trouble as he's got damage to the front and also the rear of his car Pretty, uh, everything except the roof by the look and of that the, and the side yeah <laughs> yeah side back front and uh, probably the other side which can't actually see so 37-3 for Ruddy Bird last time 39-0 but we saw that who was getting past Smolder, Smolder with a 41. So this lap is going to be the telling one. Aid getting 36.8 last time around, but he is 32 seconds behind where Smolder is. So unless someone falls off the road, it's unfortunate, but it would seem that Aid is going to be out of the podium running. 
Scott is picking up the pace a little bit again. He's getting to the 52s again. He's got to be very careful, but he's still he's still on par to do it. Yeah, he's, he's still lifting and coasting, so he's got some insane pace being able to do do that. Yeah. I'm seeing the guys in the chat, they're saying that Scott should be able to go to the end with the fuel that he's got. Um, obviously, Empower does have the penalty as well, so only that could be factored. Yeah, but obviously Scott, all he needs to do is to stay within a second of yeah. uh, Empower, and he's he's got the win. That's if he does end up losing the position to uh, Empower all. on track. <laughs> yeah. That there's still so many things still to play out. This is absolutely fantastic. As, as we tend to find with endurance racing, we we you know you have to face in the middle that it's just you know people running their pace, hitting their marks, just you know running the clock down, and then you have. The, you know, the frantic start as you always have in a motor race and then it's always at the end where there's several stories left to unfold there's always that amazing the amazing battles left to tell the story of and look oh. at that 35 5 nearly three full seconds off of ready bird last time around at that pace Bo will certainly be right there if Brzezantic is getting close to inferno that's a battle for fifth position as one of the green astons right ahead of inferno there but yeah, I, so we're looking at, we're really keeping an eye on Ready Bird and Bo, and Scott and Empower, both class leads. And Scott again, oh my god, Scott with a 52.7, Empower with a 51.8. So he's doing everything he can to close in. 13 laps, 13 minutes rather left to go. Oh, seven laps, a rough guess. Well, that's that's probably eight or nine laps of leader's pace oh it's gonna be close Bo's lost some time on this lap the gap's gone from eight nine seconds back up to ten seconds sounds like mm. he's passed one of the uh the ktm crossbows you can see that smolder's not too far behind still hanging in and around two seconds so smolder is there lurking in the background just in case there is an opportunity we see Bazanchik oh, running wow. a little bit wide and then Inferno running a little bit Very wide. wide. <laughs> yeah, Bazanchik was on the on the grass going into the corner and then Inferno was on the tarmac on the corner exit. I believe that's Ready Bird that's behind him, is it not? It is! It is. <laughs> Let's shove the M3 off the road. That's a little bit unceremonious. Yeah, yep. exactly as you called. The uh, bow lost. Uh, nine tenths of a second that time around. Oh, it's going to lose more time as well to that Aston Martin. The Aston Martin just needs to stay on the racing line. As I said, just yeah, be as predictable as you possibly can be, and let the uh, let the other cars go around you. So we see Scott. He seemed to pick up the pace. He doesn't seem to be lifting mm. and coasting quite so much. M power five and a half seconds behind though. What is Scott's lap time? this time round as he comes across the line of 53.6 and Empower is clocked up 51.6 so two seconds gone Empower will nail him at that pace but he is not going to have a lot of time to actually make the overtake happen when he gets there Bo is running out of running out of laps as well to close in what is now seven seconds on Ruddy Bird so it's doable, but it's yeah. He's really got to get on with it. Well, he has been getting on with it for lap on lap on lap. To be fair, but I mean, you got to think that Bo fell to the fell. Uh, he had that huge incident with um, Jeremy, which dropped him almost last in the entire race. I think did drop him to last in the entire race, and is now pressuring for the win. Yeah, that, that's a clear example of why you do not give up in endurance mm. racing because the. You never know what's going to happen to your other competitors around you. They could have blistering pace, but as we saw, the Ace had an incident earlier on that dropped him off the lead. And he's currently in fourth place at the moment, but he's not really in any contention to fight for the podium. Mm. And obviously, Bo's got his head down, worked out a decent strategy to work his way back up through the field, and is now in with a chance of getting the win. I think Scott is still doing some... Yeah, lifting and coasting. Yeah, very, trying to very much that so. Fuel. Three, Three and, and a half, half seconds. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, between him and Empower, it's. 
Uh, I think. Well, he's committed to it now. He can't really change it now. He, no. he is still the right side of the right side of the numbers, but he's going to have the devil's own job keeping him power behind him when he gets there, and he will at that rate. Oh, what's up to Bo? Bo's in trouble. Oh, oh no, no! He said a spin. I suddenly thought smaller was right. Oh, and he's hit the wall again. Oh, Bo. Oh. That is tragic. But then that, you know, you take your eye off the ball for just that split second. You, you know, you said to yourself, you you catch a curve wrong in these in these uh, LMP3s, and it will just spit you out. And he's struggling to accelerate now. So, yeah, that's a very unhappy car. Oh, what a tragedy for Bo. He can't even keep it straight, but the look at that. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of commentator's curse possibly there. But, um, yeah, very unfortunate for Bo that's robbed us of a battle for the win in LMP3. However, the battle for the class win in GT4 is oh, still steady. on. <laughs> I wonder if very. Empower is actually using a possibly a stick shift or is possibly using the clutch and heel and tone because he's going from fourth gear down into second oh uh, yeah he's not going down sequentially he's skipping mm. gears on the downshifts which is quite interesting because I did hear him a number of times in the first turn chuck it into the corner and then yeah you just hear all the revs drop and yeah. all of a sudden pick back up and I thought he may have been actually locking the uh, differential because that tends to what uh, that's what tends to happen if you do lock the wheels heavily under braking and lock the diff, the revs do go with it. But yeah, it sounds like, or looks like, he may actually be using a, a H pattern stick shift. Nice. And using it very, very well, I would say, judging by that. Yeah. Scott, though, still looking to play the fuel, <laughs> play the numbers. He's so, he's running that so unbearably close, but that is the gap now. And finally, a 51.2 for Empower last time around. Absolutely insane pace from the Mustang, which this is inevitable, surely. Because he can't pick up the pace. Scott can't pick up the pace any further because he just hasn't the spare fuel, I'd have thought. No, but if Scott has got a wise head on his shoulders, he'll probably let... Well, for one, let that Janetta go through. <laughs> Two, uh, probably just let Empower go through. Just run the risk and think more about the championship points. He got the win last mm. time round. If he can run it to the end without needing to stop, he'll probably pick up second place, which is a decent haul of points. He'll maintain the championship lead. Here goes Empower around the outside. I think Scott's going to try and make him work a little bit for it, though. This is going to be yeah. interesting. Oh, yeah, he's, he's not wanting to just let him have it. Oh, but there we go. Look at that. That's got to be job done. No? Nope. No. <laughs> Scott say, try again, sir. I still got the inside line. I think it's... Oh, oh that's a bit, a bit of, of rubbing going on. <laughs> yeah, Rubin's racing. I think if yeah. Scott is trying to fuel safe whilst battling, that's going to give a bit of an advantage to Empower. Empower's going to have the inside line for this corner, though. And all the previous corners, he's at the outside, la outside line. So that could now be Empower slotting himself up into the lead just about. As both of them were looking a little bit wiggly through the corner. And now Scott is right there on the back. It's probably going to be a little bit frustrating, but one thing that he does need to do is think about the fuel. Yes, you got your opponent right there in front of you, but do you have enough fuel to last that last five and a half minutes with just those nine litres that he has remaining? That's the, the golden question, isn't it? And it's so tempting to push on. Yeah. But you just you can't ignore the, the, the fuel numbers. That is I mean, absolutely fair play for Scott for trying it. And he was so close to making it work. But Empower's blistering pace has just undone that, basically, for Scott. And he's already fallen to where the uh, slipstream's going to be a little bit less effective, about half a second back. Andrecht, 22 seconds behind. Bear in mind, he was uh, two seconds or so ahead of Scott before the incident that uh, Andrex had. So that's undone itself pretty badly. But Andrex, at some point, has uh, overtaken Helen McCoy in the distant pass. So uh, Andrex will see the podium, if nothing else, for the GT4s. Oh, look at that. Empower's just gone. Unless Empower throws out into the wall, which he hasn't done all race long, 
then uh, it's looking pretty certain that that's going to go to the Mustang. Yeah, I'd agree with you there. I think Scott just needs to focus on actually getting to the end with the fuel that he's got. One thing that we should probably turn our attention to is Smolder in second place. He is less than five seconds behind Ruddy Bird. It'll be interesting to see what his lap time is uh, when it comes to the end of the lap and see just how much he's gained on this lap. It seems like a considerable amount and uh, Smolder was quicker on the uh, previous lap as well. He was quicker by about 1.3 to close in four seconds with only four minutes to go. He's going to need to pick up more than that, but we will see what happens. See what the lap times were this time. Where's Ruddy Bird? There he is. Scything his way through the G through. That oh, that's the GT4 Scott. lead. Yeah. So for Ruddy Bird, that is a 138.7. And for Smolder, 37.8. So picks up nine tenths there, but it's not going to be enough. Nope. Freddy Bird is in amongst some traffic as well. This could be slowing him down more than he would like. M Power just about manages to keep it out of the wall. Freddy Bird is going to be hoping that this uh, LMP3 lifts off and moves out of his way to get him through, which he does exactly that. So Freddy Bird has been set free and he's got quite a bit of space between him and the next car. However, Smolder has got the gap now down to less than two and a half seconds obviously he's got to negate the same uh, navigate the same traffic but didn't really look like he was going to be held up too much there by M power it'll just be about this Janetta sorry the uh, this Ligier LMP3 car up ahead but yeah Ruddy Bird taking mm. out another decent chunk of time on the race leader on the previous lap and looks like that aforementioned... Oh, I wonder if he was getting out of the way, but a little bit too early to let Smolder through. This is going to be the start of the penultimate lap when Ruddy Bird crosses the line again. Just checking in with... a 3.6 is now the gap between Scott and uh, M. Bauer. Scott's... Uh, 5.1 Running it close. Yeah, but I mean, he, he can continue to fuel safe now. He's, you know, yeah. under... just under 20 seconds ahead of Andrak, so he'll be fine with that and so lap 52 commences 39.9 for Ruddy Bird 38.4 one and a half gone two laps remain here at Watkins Glen and Smolder it's possible but he would rather need he needs Ruddy Bird to be held up again to close that gap down I reckon yep although Ruddy Bird is coming up on traffic now but he's catching it at the right time for himself has gone past him. Sounds like a KTM. Isn't there he is in the background. So yeah, Ruddy Bird won't be held up here. Smolder might be though. Especially if he's coming up to both cars in the carousel. Swing around the outside and yeah, he's had to back out and lift off. Ooh, that KTM moving over. Out of the way, but that yeah, he's gone and lost a second on this lap so far. Both still hanging around, in and around third place. He hasn't completely dropped off. True. But uh, yeah, his bow will just be there taking up picking up what he can, unfortunately. A great shame considering uh, what the, the form he was showing that led him to there, but that is that is the nature of the beast. We have less than a minute to go. As Ready Bird then from the lead, three seconds near enough. Between yourself and Smolder, there he is Smolder, the white enemy in the background. Well, that's not a bad uh, way to have you... What, how did Ruddy Bird do last time out at Cota? Do you remember? Uh, he... I don't have the last was, result to him. He finished in ninth place, so he didn't pick up any points. He did finish the race. I imagine he'll be very, very happy and he'll be absolutely ecstatic with uh, this result. Finding he can keep it on the track between the white lines on this final lap and uh, a couple of the guys in the chat are just asking for a quick penalty update so if we can have a look at those just oh, to make sure that everything is all good and groovy between all our drivers looks like they are for the most part yeah no Ooh, Ruddy Bird's got one second penalty interesting he, he does but three seconds to the good yeah for for him at the moment and 
Empower now leads by nearly 10 seconds over Scott. But Scott's got oh, two and a half litres. He could do One, it. He should be able to push can... pretty much normally with that amount of fuel, I think. But the checkered flag is now out and waiting for Ruddy Bird to find his way through the remaining half the lap. Down to turn eight. There is Smolder in the background, but unless Ruddy Bird throws it into the wall, the top spot of the podium is going to go to series debutant Ruddy Ruddy Bird. Well, his debutant was last week. You know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Smolder still gained about half a second on him in the last few turns, but it is not going to be enough. Here comes Ruddy Bird then. Your winner here at Watkins Glen. Don't trip over the M3 on your way past. Which of course he doesn't. It is Ruddy Bird. Smolder is going to take second. Bo, I thought was going to throw that into the wall for a moment. But uh, Bo takes third. ADA is a very distant fourth. Whoop. In the NMPs. Oh, bit of a brush with the wall. Yeah. Where's our GT4 leaders? Right behind Aid, actually. Just no, Aid has got a few, few friends in front of him, but... Oh, what might have been for Aid the Ace. It's Chases down. Whoever that is, and someone's just killed their engine. And, oh, very nice. Rolled over for that one. But the winner of the GT4s is Empower. After all of that, Scott, with less than a litre in the tank. Really? <laughs> I was going to say, I can't quite see because I've got the race complete, <coughs> but he's going to be very, very happy with that, as you can see with the flash of the lights. Yeah. Point Very nice. six litres. That's all he had in the tank. Point six. Yeah, very nice result for him. Andres will be coming across the line. His t Scott's teammate coming in third. He'll be pretty happy with that. And then Colonel McCoy is about five seconds behind. Here he comes across the line now in his Aston Martin. And then Dacuza, I believe, has already come across the he, line. He was no, just no. ahead he of was, the leader. Was, so. Yes. He's pretty much the last car on the lead lap. On Sorry, the last car running. In fact, he is the last car running, I think. Uh, there's a couple of cars in front of him who are coming across the line. That white Janetta behind is Smolder, I believe. So, yeah. Uh, Presantic's done. Inferno's done. Galactic Gentleman's done. Aaron's done. Minesco's stopped. Uh, Peaches? No, Peaches stopped. I think done. Mo most, if not all, have uh, crossed the line. So here comes Dakuza. And Dakuza was indeed the last car to cross the line. Indeed. So here are your final results then. In the LMP3 class, Ruddy Bird takes the win. Smolder picking up second. GTR Bo picking up third. Aid the Ace fourth. Bazancek fifth. Inferno in sixth place. Intergalactic Gentleman in seventh. Aaron was in eighth. Ninth place went to Minasco. And then 10th was Peaches, and Flaming Parrot was the last LMP3 car in 11th place. And then just quickly to run through the GT4s, Empower took the win there ahead of Scott in second. His teammate Andrex in third. And then fortunately, I didn't get to see the rest <laughs> no, of the grid. Right. But uh, yeah, very good uh interesting and entertaining race very glad that we did actually manage to get the coverage of the race in the end without any real technical issue i know a couple of the drivers had some unfortunate issues hopefully we can stay clear of those uh next week king kodiak thank you very much for joining me in the uh commentary box for this race and kind of helping to recover the stream after some <laughs> troublesome 20 minutes at the beginning or so it was my total pleasure, sir. Yes, as always. Of course, if you are wanting to come back in the commentary box at any point through this season, let me know. And I'll more than happily open the door and let you in. As a... Certainly shall, certainly shall. Yes, excellent. Well, I think that's going to conclude our coverage here with round two at Watkins Glen. Thank you very much for those of you who stuck through the technical issues in the chat and stayed through the entirety of the stream. Obviously, there was some a little bit of frustration with the technical issues. I do apologize for those, but obviously very relieved and very happy that we could cover the entirety of its race in full. But yeah, thank you very much for joining us. 
subscribe to the Apex Online Racing channel to make sure you don't miss out on any future videos here and any future live streams. I've been Yorkie, joined by King Kodiak. Did, was there anything you wanted to say just to round off? Not at all. Uh, it's, you already said it, rather. So, yes, thank you very much for those that have been with us throughout. Thank you to AOR sponsors, of course. Without them, AOR would not continue to grow. Thank you very much to our drivers, particularly those that, that uh, you know, stuck through the difficult times. It really has been a display of, of what can happen if you stick with it. And you know, commiserations to those that didn't see the flag, but wow, what a race it was. Yes, indeed. So... Thanks once again. Hopefully we shall catch you next week where we shall be racing at Laguna Seca on the 7th of February once again at 8pm UK time. That's when we'll be kicking off the stream with qualifying beginning at quarter past the hour. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully we shall catch you soon. I've been Yorkie. Ciao and good night.